Studios and Marvel to our um, Captain America webinar today. Um, we're really excited to meet the five finalists of the Captain America Girls Reforming the World Challenge and hear from the top winner about her internship at Marvel Studios. In the movie Captain America Civil War, released in May, the Avengers are faced with many challenges as they attempt to safeguard humanity, preserve the Earth for future generations, and more. Marvel challenged girls in grades 10 through 12 to use their powerful skills in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, to make positive changes in the world. Through their many innovations, girls are reforming the future through their science and engineering projects. They are simplifying lives, helping the disabled, making life on Earth better, safer, and healthier. Over 1,000 girls submitted videos to the contest explaining their work, how it benefits humankind, and why they want to intern at Marvel Studios. In April, five amazing young scientists and engineers were picked as finalists. They were honored for their work by attending the red carpet premiere of the Captain America Civil War movie. Each received a $500 high yield savings account from Synchrony Bank, received a tour of Walt Disney Studios and Dolby Laboratories. You can visit www.captainamericacivilwarchallenge.com to learn more. In the end, one finalist was selected as the winner of a one-week internship at Marvel Studios. Today, we will hear from all five finalists, including the top winner, and they will talk about the science and engineering behind their projects, their experiences in California, and their advice for younger students to be successful in STEM fields. We are here to celebrate them and listen to their stories and advice as role models. We hope you had a chance to watch the trailer ahead of this webinar. If not, don't worry. The link is available on our Google Plus page. So let's get started. I'll quickly introduce the five finalists, then they will each have the opportunity to tell you about their projects. Maya, the top winner, will tell you about her Marvel internship, then we will hold a question and answer session with all of the Marvel finalists. Questions will be asked by past winners of the Broadcom Masters National Middle School Science Competition, a program of Society for Science and the Public. Without further ado, let's meet the Marvel finalists. Introducing Margaret Fleck from Emmaus, Pennsylvania. Next, Janie Kim from San Diego, California. Vivian King from Marlboro, New Jersey. Holly Reaping from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay. And Maya from West Sacramento, California. So let's get started. We have a few questions for Margaret. We'll get her on the screen. All right, we're going to go ahead and skip um, to... to no, she's, she's on the oh, great. If Margaret um, can unmute her microphone, and we'll ask her about her amazing project. All right, so we have Vivian on the screen. We'll go ahead and ask Vivian to tell us about her amazing project idea and how it makes a positive impact on the world. Hi guys, uh, so my name is Vivian and my project um, was the one with solar thermal collectors and basically um, I merged, I made a solar thermal collector that was hybrid in design so that it could run uh, both air and water at the same time and that's good because current solar thermal collectors can't do that, they can only run um, either air or water and so you can't use them year round. So since you can use um, the hybrid solar thermal collector year round, you can uh, use it in all sorts of different climates with uh, even climates with seasons so then um, if this design were used worldwide, then it could greatly reduce the carbon footprint of, um, I guess, residential areas. And um, so, wait, what was the next question? I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's great. We were, it's fascinating to hear about your project and um, how it makes a big impact on the environment. 
Um, next, we want to hear a little bit about your experience as a Marvel finalist. Can you tell us what was the highlight of this experience for you? Oh, um, well, for me, there were two highlights. One, I guess the primary one was um, being able to go to L.A. and meet all sorts of different people from, like, all sorts of walks of life and getting to uh, hear their advice and, um, I guess, applying those seg segments of advice to my own life. And um, the second uh, highlight for me was um, obviously, like, seeing the movie and meeting different people and different actors. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. That really, that is amazing. Absolutely. And, Vivian, what is next for you? What are you working on next? Um, for me, I would like to continue my research. Um, I actually am improving upon the solar thermal collectors this summer. And I also look forward to conducting more independent research, more like original research on my own, and um, as I go into college where those kinds of opportunities would be more available. Very good. Well, congratulations. Um, you're doing amazing work, and we're really proud to know that you'll make a huge difference on our planet for sure. And um, so next we're going to move to Janie. We'd love to hear from Janie about your project. Tell us about what you did. Oh, Janie, um, you are on mute, and we uh, need you to unmute your machine. Is it good? There you go. Perfect. Okay, okay so um, what I did was I created a novel antiseptic combination um, using disinfectants from contact lens solutions. So these would be a lot less irritating and non-caustic than uh, traditional disinfectants like bleach or ethanol. And with this combination, I took a surface acoustic wave device, which essentially vaporizes or nebulizes liquids. Um, it's really cheap, it's affordable, um, doesn't use much energy. And so when I combined that device with my combination of antiseptics, this could potentially be a way to stop um, hospital uh, infections um, by sterilizing hospital rooms, offices, public areas. Wow, that's really cool. So it literally could save a lot of lives. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, what was your favorite part of the experience at the Marvel Premiere Week? Um, definitely getting to meet everyone else. Um, everyone here is so amazing. And also being able to see how STEM kind of propels different fields. Um, like filmmaking was kind of unexpected, I guess, but you see how STEM makes possible, like the color. Uh, the color gamut, visuals, sound system, um, and being on the red carpet. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> so where do you take your project from here? Um, I want to see if my disinfection system would be effective against non-bacterial pathogens. Because um, I only tested it against bacteria, but I want to see if it's effective against like viruses or fungi. Um, in the meantime, I've been learning different techniques in lab, like tissue culture, western blots, um, stuff like that. So I want to try to apply that to my project and see if I can make it go further. Well, that is awesome. Best of luck. And we know that you can do it. Uh, very good. Congratulations. Um, so we see Margaret is back on the line. So we're going to go ahead and interview Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Hello. Hi, great. Uh, Margaret, we're, we're glad to have back. Can you tell us a little bit about your project? What did you do to win this amazing experience? All right, so I basically created uh, two computer programs that I called the headphone stairs. And what they do is they regulate the volume of your headphones so that you can listen to your music for as loud and for as long as possible without worrying about damaging your hearing. Wow, that's amazing. I see you have headphones in right now. So are you, are you using it now? Actually, no, I'm not. I want this turned up as loud as possible. I guess that's true. Very good. Well, that's that seems like something that could help a lot of people for sure. Um, so tell us, what did you do when you were in California, and what was your favorite part? In California, well, first of all, it was awesome to be able to like, meet all the finalists when I got there because I saw them in the video that Marvel put out and like seeing what their projects were, and I just couldn't wait to meet all of them. So that was the first thing that happened that was awesome. And then, I guess just like the rest of them, seeing that premiere of the movie, uh, getting to see, like, first of all, how Dolby and all their technologies worked into the movie, and then meeting the movie stars and the actors, too. That was, everything was awesome. Very cool. Well, it seems like a remarkable experience. So what are you up to now? 
Um, well, with my project, I was luckily able to present it at a, the local science center, the Da Vinci Science Center in uh, the Allentown. Um, they had their first annual Code Fest, where they invited presenters from all around the area to uh, with um, STEM projects to show um, children and their parents what people were doing around the area. So I was able to show a lot of kids what they could do with STEM and like where the opportunities that they would get from it. That's fantastic. You know, it takes meeting someone um, who's close to a young person's age and is accomplishing a lot sometimes to influence them the most. So um, great that you had that experience to share what you know. Congratulations. Thank All right. Next, we're going to move on to Holly. Hi, Holly. Hi. Hi. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your project? So my project was a network of inexpensive mobile computers with security and education capabilities that's all run on renewable energy and everything on it is accessible without internet. Wow, very cool. Um, so have you, util have you implemented this in the field anywhere? Uh, not yet, but I was able to go, go to a bunch of middle school kids and they were really interested in how something that's just this size could have all like a thousand textbooks and three thousand videos on it. Wow, yeah, that truly is incredible. Can you flip it around for us so we get the full 360 view? That's the size of the computer. Super cool. Um, so tell us about another event that maybe we haven't heard about yet um, that happened during your week together in California. One of the other highlights. <laughs> so everyone loved the red carpet, just going to get that out there. Um, but one of the most amazing things that I think we all agreed was just fantastic, was getting to have that dinner with a, like 20 women in STEM who work underneath the Walt Disney Company, just hearing all the different things that they do, from Imagineers to visual effects artists, just all the different things that um, the entertainment industry touches with STEM and seeing how they're doing their jobs and how much they love it. Very cool. Yeah, definitely need to hear about STEM careers all around us, especially at Disney. Um, so what are you up to since the week together? Uh, well, since then, I've been teaching some classes for middle school students to get them into programming. But mainly over the summer, I've just been a software engineering intern at Intelligent Software Solutions, where I've been working, uh, gathering data on satellites to increase its situational awareness. It's pretty fun. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Uh, good for you. Keep up the amazing work. We're really proud of you. Um, congratulations. Um, next, we're going to move on to Maya. Great. Hi, Maya. Um, so, Maya, before we get into your... Oh, and if you can unmute, um, then we will... Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, perfect. Hello. Um, so, before we talk about your internship, everyone can hear about your project. So my project was a robotic, a robot that replaces a guide dog for the visually impaired because a guide dog usually costs around $50,000 and that's for training, for matching it up with the right person and just overall taking care of it. Um, my project only costs around $600 so it's way, it's better financial um, support for the people who really need those kind of, um, who want to go through their daily lives um, but they can't because they have a disability. Wow, that's incredible. Definitely will impact a lot of people. Um, so how did you get the idea for your project? Where I got did you the idea again with the, building the robot. Um, I got the idea for building my project because I have three dogs myself and I know how much it takes to take care of them and it made me think about how much more work it would take if somebody had a disability such as visual impairment. So that's where it really all started and that's where my design came out of. I wanted it to be portable and easy to take around, not too heavy, um, so that I could go to more parts of the world. Very cool. Um, so what was your favorite part of the week in California? We know that you're the, the winner of the internship. We can't wait to hear about that. Uh, but besides that, what were some of the highlights of the experience? Um, the highlight of the experience was definitely the dinner with the 20 women in, women in STEM. They really had an impact on me because they looked at me with so many, so much advice for my future that I still want to apply with my life and I have been applying with my life. Just always say yes to whatever opportunity comes up. Travel if you can. Um, don't hold back. Don't let anybody t tell you no. It's basically what I learned the whole time I was there and here. 
Very good. Um, so yeah, now Maya is in California. She's been with uh, Marvel for her internship for a week. Um, so tell us, what have you been up to? Whatever you can tell us. <laughs> yes, I've been up to a lot of secret stuff. Um, so far, I've done everything that there is to do. Um, I spent so much time with Victoria shadowing her. She's amazing. I love her spirit. Um, I got to spend a day at Imagineering, which was my favorite day by far. Um, we went to behind the scenes a lot. Um, we just, I got to see the family side of Marvel as well, and thinking about how it's a family here, and not just a workplace. Very good. Um, have you learned anything unexpected since you started? Hold on. Victoria? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So if anybody didn't know who Victoria Alonso is, she, um, she's vice president. No, yeah, vice president for Marvel, and she's a woman, and she is amazing. She, everybody loves her here. Just ask anybody. Um, what I didn't expect to learn here so far was how many jobs there are in that are included in the film industry. So what I've learned is that the film industry is STEM. Um, STEM isn't just science, technology, engineering, and math. It's connected in so many things. Art, it's, it's connected in history, everything. It's just connected in everything. It's always good to learn something because it's going to end up coming back to you later in life. Very, very true words. Um, so what has been your favorite part so far? Definitely the Imagineering. Definitely. Imagineering. Yes. For people who may not know, um, what is Imagineering? Imagineering is the, the practice of engineering for Walt Disney. And they engineer all of the parks. They engineer the hotels. They're behind the design of everything. They're the reason why the parks are where they are today and why everybody keeps going. They're the reason for the attractions and for the feeling and the entertainment in the parks. Very cool. And I think anyone could see why that might be one of your favorite days for sure. Um, so Maya, what are your future plans? What do you want to do um, when you're a little bit older? Um, they're not set in stone, but I would like to become an engineer myself. I'm not sure in what yet, but it's out there. It's just about getting yourself out there and learning, so you never know what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how is this experience at Marvel supporting your future goals? This experience at Marvel really helped my future goals because I've really only worked in robotics so far, and my main reason I wanted to do this internship was because it would expose me to so many different jobs. And it has. There's been people who majored in art or people who majored in science, and they're all working together to make one big product that everybody loves. So it's shown me a different pathways that I can take and still end up somewhere I love. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. It, it says a lot about um, just kind of going where life takes you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> um, anything else that you want to share with the audience about your experience at Marvel? I want to share that what I've learned so far is that Marvel likes to create an experience and a feeling. So that's really important to me because most companies, I feel like being here, I felt a real family um, vibe from them. And other companies, I, I feel like you would not feel that as much as more of a workplace. And I think it's really important to have in, in something you love. So if you're working somewhere, if it doesn't feel right, you should just leave. That's what Victoria told you told me, and I, I really take that advice seriously. Very good. Very good advice from some very cool people, for sure. Uh, well, thank you for sharing this experience with us, Maya. I think uh, everyone really enjoyed hearing about that, and it no doubt will impact you positively in the future. So congratulations. We have a little time left there, too, so enjoy it. Yes. Yes, very good. Um, so I'm sure that many of our listeners today are are eager to hear from all five of these amazing role models to hear what advice they have for um, scientists and engineers of the next generation. Um, to help us with that today, we have four students from the Broadcom Masters National Middle School Science Competition um, who are winners in their own right, great scientists too. 
and they've come up with some great questions for our Marvel finalists. And so I'll introduce them each one at a time. Um, you can also learn more about the Broadcom Master's Program through our link below. Great. So first, I'd like to introduce Michaela Lindsay from Florida. Michaela has a few questions to ask today. Great. And Michaela, unmute um, your microphone before you answer the question. Ask the question. Perfect. Very good. Uh, this question is for Vivian and Margaret. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you have faced on this path, and how did you handle it? Um. Hey, um, so I guess I'm answering that question first. Um, for me, my biggest challenge was while I was making um, my solo thermal collectors, and um, for me, it was just kind of hard to find all the time I wanted and all the resources I needed to kind of create all that I wanted to create. So. Um, I kind of had to um, set limits for myself and set budgets in terms of how much time I had to spend and um, what kind of resources would be actually available for me. So, um, for instance, the solar thermal collectors I actually built were um, built with time constraints and with material constraints in mind, and all the materials I used were cost effective to some degree. And um, yeah, so I think anything you do, you have to keep in mind that you do have finite time and resources, and you have to work um, according to those limits. Very good. Um, and we'll let Margaret answer this question as well next. Well, I think that the biggest challenge is taking the first step and actually deciding that you're going to do something because it's so easy to just think about like, hmm, I'd like to do that or that sounds cool or I want to make a change with this, but actually deciding, like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and devote time and effort to this, that, that's the hardest part. Has another question. Like, okay, so this question is for Janie, Holly, and Mia or Maya. Um, how has your experience as a Captain America finalist influenced you? Um, so I guess as a Captain America finalist, being able to see and learn about all the STEM based behind the scenes of filmmaking was really eye opening. Um, like the sound systems and visuals because science finds its way into so many different things. Um, and after coming back from LA, I think I've been more curious to know how STEM plays a role in even everyday um, kind of like boring things too, how it like influences them. Next, we'll hear from Holly. You can unmute your microphone for us, Holly. Very good. Okay, so for me, I think it was just a really big confidence booster. You know, I'm just not that afraid to put myself and my project out there anymore. Um, definitely learned a lot while I was out there. It's just interesting how now that we've kind of got this platform seen as finalists, we can just use our voices to get some action going. Awesome. Um, next, we'll go on to my unmute your microphone. Um, being a Captain America finalist has really influenced me because everybody here wanted to share their projects with us and after we shared ours and it, it really made me want to go back home and share my project with everybody in my community showing them that STEM is an option for them for anybody who really wants to learn and it's not that hard to learn, you just got to be curious. Very, very good advice. Thank you. Uh, Maya, and thank you, Michaela. Great. Um, our next Broadcom Master is from Pennsylvania, Shreya Suresh, and she has... Um, Pennsylvania. Hi, everyone. Um, so this question is for Janie and Vivian. What makes a person creative, and how do we enhance the creativity in us? Um, so I guess curiosity, because um, being curious leads to questions, which leads to wanting answers, um, which leads to experimenting, and I guess not just experimenting in the scientific sense. Um, so what I do is I keep up with a few good websites on subjects and topics that I totally enjoy, um, which for me is science and writing. And I guess reading through the latest on what you enjoy can give you sudden ideas, and I think this helps quick start creative bursts. 
Great, and we'll let Vivian answer the question next. Yeah, I totally second Janie on that, and um, I also think that creativity is um, when you take the things you already know, with, like what you already learned in school and what you learned by yourself, and kind of expanding on that previous knowledge, and that's uh, creativity. So kind of going uh, down the path that no one else has gone down before, and um, in a way that no one else has thought before, uh, that for me is creativity, and as for how to uh, enhance that creativity, um, you have to love what you do, and um, kind of uh, be, keep on being inspired by uh, people who use their creativity to innovate and to make new things and um, use that inspiration to look around you and see what needs fixing and what you can do to innovate and um, I guess change the world by yourself. Great, great advice. Shreya has another question to ask. Um, this question is for Maya. What was the best part about being an intern at Marvel? The best part about being an intern in Marvel was definitely being able to get so much advice from different perspectives because I met with so many different people. I got a tour down around the whole office place and they were all really happy to lend a hand and ask me about what my future plans were or ask me if I was interested in their job and I got to ask them questions um, asking how they got where they are today, what they did and so it was really nice to receive so much advice from different people. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Shreya. All right, next uh, we have Soy from Florida, who's a Broadcom master this past year, and she'll ask her question. Hi, Soy. You may need to unmute your microphone. Perfect. All right. Um, so my first question is for Margaret, Holly, and Vivian. And, like, as you know, girls are still, like, underrepresented in many STEM fields. So I was curious of what got you interested in STEM. Like, was there like a specific event in your childhood that sparked your interest? So we'll start with Margaret first. Um, there was no specific event per se, but just a whole culmination of like I've always liked gadgets, especially like you know iPod, the PlayStation, everything that just comes together and. Uh, as I was growing up, I always loved like numbers and like Legos and puzzles and putting things together. And I think I, I just found that STEM was so similar to that, and uh, that's that's why I've always liked it. Awesome. And then Holly will answer next. Um, it's really important that you brought up that women are just so underrepresented in STEM. In my internship right now. There are only about six women in my floor, and there's about 100 people there. So that's 6%. We need to get that up. Um, and for me, both my parents were electrical engineers, so I was kind of brought up into that idea with just technology is what creates the future. Ever since the printing press came out and computers, it's been changing the world. And once you're part of STEM, you can be the one changing the world. So that's what's really pushing me to keep doing it. Um, so I'm sort of like, like Margaret in the sense that um, I never really had a single event that pushed me to STEM. And when I was a kid, I played with like all sorts of toys. I was obsessed with Barbies, and um, I didn't play with Legos, but I did play with the um, I don't know what they're called, like the little log things that you stack and build houses out of. So I was really obsessed with those, and I guess that sort of pushed me to STEM a little bit. But um, yeah, when I grew up, I was also, like, right now I'm also interested in lots of things besides STEM, and STEM is just one of, like, my many passions, and I've been privileged to go to a school where people encourage me to uh, pursue STEM, and um, there's actually a pretty equal balance of the girls and guys interested in STEM at my school, but um, I do understand that there is a need for women to have greater representation in STEM, and, um, yeah, so I guess the focus for future, like, getting people into STEM should probably be to kind of um, encourage both females and males equally to pursue what they actually like to do. Okay. All right, and my um, second question is for Jamie and Maya. Uh, I'm curious of what you guys learned about yourself while doing this project. Um, so from doing my project, I guess I've learned that if I'm really interested in something, I go all out. Um, for my disinfected nebulizer project, I got really absorbed in it, 
um, while I was experimenting, my laptop was like a semi-organized mess. I had like 15 desktops, each with a browser window, um, each with like 15 tabs, all open to articles, reviews, papers, um, whatnot. So, yeah, I guess I get very absorbed, and through this project, I realized how to channel into that. For me, I learned that I have to take my time a lot. Uh, once I get an idea in my head, I want to finish the project. Maybe that I think it's a problem because it won't work right or the right sensors. Take some time to design. Okay, so uh, the next question after is Annika Urban from Pennsylvania who is a Broadcom master in 2014. Hi, Annika. You can unmute your microphone for us before you ask the question. <laughs> All right. Um, well, then, we actually have time for some other questions. If Michaela wants to hop back in and ask another question for our Marvel finalists. A little technical difficulty there. So I'll go ahead and ask a question that we wanted to ask of all five of the Marvel finalists, which is if you could give one piece of advice to every young girl in the world who is interested in STEM, what would that be? Maybe we'll start this one. Uh, Maya is on the screen. She can talk about what she wants to share with the world. OK. Um, one piece of advice I would give to all the girls of the world interested in STEM is to never say no. If you want to learn something, go after it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If it's your life, you can't let anybody else make you do what you don't want to do. If you want to go pursue something, pursue it. The only bad thing that could happen is somebody says no. But you can still keep fighting for it because it's your life, it's your dream. Don't let anybody keep you away from it. Great advice. Thank you, Maya. Um, how about, what at the end, why don't you tell us your advice for all of the girls? Um, mine is pretty similar to Maya's. Um, I think do what you love to do, whether it's STEM or some other subject. And if you do love to do it, you will fight to do it, no matter what else, uh, what someone else tells you to do. And you'll keep on working to become better at it, no matter what happens. And I guess strive to become the best you can be. And whether that's STEM or from other fields, then you will find success. Great. Thank you so much, Vivian. Um, next, we'll ask. Holly to ask this question, and then we'll loop back to Annika. Seems to be back, and so she can ask a question after that. So, Holly, why don't you um, tell us what is your advice? Uh, my advice would definitely have to be: don't compare yourself to anyone else. Just focus on what makes you unique. If you just start comparing yourself to people in your life, you're just going to get way too stressed out. It's not worth it because what you're doing is enough. Just focus on your skills and what you have to offer the world. Great. Thanks, Holly. Great. Um, and Janie, what is your advice? My advice would be to find a professional mentor or someone who can teach you um, tips and tricks of the trade, because that makes the learning curve a lot faster, and you might learn things that you might not otherwise learn. Awesome. Very good advice. And Margaret. Um, my advice would be don't be afraid to ask for help because, well, nobody knows everything about everything. So you can always, you know, your project can always be better with input from other people, no matter uh, how good you feel about it already. And uh, don't be afraid to put, like, all the time and effort you need into your project to make it the very best it can be if you really, really care about it. Great advice. Thank you, Margaret. All right. Um, so back to introducing Annika. Sorry, Annika, we had a little... Technical difficulty, but welcome back. Um, Annika Urban, a Broadcom Master, has a question that she would like to ask. 
Okay, this question is from Margaret and Holly. So who in your life has been most influential in helping you pursue STEM subjects? And so who are your role models? Um, well, in school, my teachers were always uh, helping me with everything I needed with math or science. They, whether I was a, a, since I'm a girl, it didn't matter to them at all. And then outside of school, my parents are always guiding and supporting me, so I have the best of in school and out school. And uh, I would say it would be those same teachers who are were always the best role models to me, especially um, the one STEM teacher that I have this year. She was the uh, actually the person that first introduced me to computer programming, and she always encouraged me, pushed me, and especially she was the one that encouraged me to do this Captain America challenge. So I am here especially because of her. Very cool. Great. Um, for me, it's definitely parents, family. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and pushing me to do the best that I can. Uh, even though my school doesn't really offer any computer science classes at all, my parents started pushing me, hey, maybe you should go take some of these classes at community college. And without that, I wouldn't be here today. But even if you do have those people pushing you, you're the only person who can motivate yourself, so you have to want it. But with people we're just looking out for you. You need that in your life. And then you do need some people to look up to, like I look up to, like Rosa Parks, Michelle Obama, Malala, amazing people who go for what they want without any hesitation. And I'm so grateful that I have people like that in my family to just look up to. Um, Annika, do you want to ask another question? I know I stole your, your first one there, but feel free to ask another. Okay, so how about um, Janie and Vivian? Um, how, what was the inspiration for your science research project? Oh, um, so for me, I've always been interested in solar energy in particular because um, I've always been interested in uh, keeping the efficiency of what gives us power as high as possible. And if you think about it, um, solar power should give us more uh, more power uh, than, for instance, wind power or um, or uh, hydroelectric power because um, there's less energy loss and transfer when you take um, energy from the sun directly. So I've always been really interested in uh, kind of improving in the field of solar energy, and that's how I came to an idea of um, solar thermal collectors. And um, inherently, solar thermal collectors uh, collect more energy than things like solar panels because um, you're taking energy directly from the sun instead of using it to um, convert it to something else, like, ele like electricity. Um, yeah. And Janie, how about you? Oh, Janie, you're on. There you go. Perfect. So um, the inspiration for my project um, started off with contact lens solutions because I wear contacts myself. I've gotten eye infections. Um, so initially, I just wanted to see which kind of commercial contact lens solution would kill bacteria the best. But then that kind of led into experimenting with like the individual components, and then with the machine. And it just kind of like kept going. Very cool. Thanks, Janie. And thank you, Annika. Um, so we have time to ask a couple of other questions. Um, we'll loop back to Michaela. Yeah. Hi, Michaela. Um, do you have another question you'd like to ask of the Marvel finalists? Um, uh, this question is for Maya, um, and I wanted to know, um, how did you start doing this project? And, because uh, that's usually, like, one of the harder parts, so how did you, like, start doing it? Um, starting projects are usually not super hard for me because I have a lot of things that are always rolling around in my mind. I'm always looking at things and thinking how they can be built or destructed and rebuilt into something else. So starting projects really depends on what you get inspiration from or who you get inspiration from. Um, it's really ending projects for me because sometimes I'll get so frustrated that I don't end them. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Maya. 
Um, next, we'll let Shreya ask another question. Okay. Hi, Shreya. I might need to unmute so we can hear your question and who you'd like to ask it to. Um, this question is for Margaret, and I was wondering what your goals for the future are and how you might expand on, on your own project that you have now. Goals. Okay, goals. I would definitely like to make this uh, project into an app so people could use it on their phones when they're listening to music and it would automatically adjust and you never have to worry about damaging your hearing again. That would be awesome. So I'm hoping uh, to do that. I definitely want to, uh, I'm looking to go to college for uh, either computer engineering or something like that so I can uh, use my education to meet not just that goal but also everything else I want to do with my career. Awesome. Very good. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, we'll go back to Soy and see if Soy has another question for our final. Yeah, hi. I have a question um, for Holly. Um, I'm, how do you feel that your project could have global impact? Oh, and Holly, if you can unmute before you start your answer. Yeah. Okay. I'm muted now. Yeah. Um, global is really big. Um, I don't know. It would, it would take a lot of steps to get it to a global point, but just thought that education is such an important thing, and it's denied to so many people worldwide. And with the technology that we have today, it's amazing that we haven't gotten to a global point where people can have a security system or education widely available to areas that internet doesn't access. So I'm just amazed that this project that's so small and so inexpensive could have a global impact that large by just giving something to people that we kind of take for granted here. Awesome. And uh, now we'll flip back to Annika and you can ask the final question of the webinar. Okay, so I'll ask Maya, why should I or anyone care about science and engineering? Okay, everyone should care about STEM, no matter who you are, because STEM is connected with everything. You may not think it, but it is. Our future is technology. We're everywhere we're heading, we're heading with computers, or print printers or VR, anything you do is with technology. Nothing hasn't been touched by STEM so far. So everywhere you go, it's going to be touched by STEM. Excellent. We could not agree more with you, Maya, about that at all. Um, so for, I'd like to thank Janie, Margaret, Holly, Vivian, and Maya for sharing your stories with us. Um, it was amazing to hear from you, and we can't wait to see where you go next. Um, it's been really inspiring to hear from these great role models who are using their STEM skills to make the world a much better place for all of us. Um, so just like the Marvel finalists and like the Avengers, everyone who's tuned into this webinar has the ability to do the same through STEM. Uh, we hope you learned a lot, and if you did not watch the trailer before you watched the webinar, we definitely recommend that you do so you can learn even more about the Marvel finalists' amazing projects um, and the experience that they had in California. Um, we also want to encourage everyone who's watching to try your own science or engineering project at home. Um, maybe a topic that's important to you would solve a problem in your local community. Um, just give it a try, and you never know where it could take you could take you to the Broadcom Masters competition for national for middle school students or even to an internship at Marvel someday just like Maya. Um, so keep your eyes open. We also wanted to let you know about the next big contest um, with Marvel Studios Doctor Strange Magic of STEM Challenge which will begin soon. So watch out for the announcement about the Doctor Strange competition. Um, so thank you to our friends at Disney Studios, Marvel, 
Society for Science and the Public, um, Broadcom Foundation, our Broadcom Masters finalists, and thanks for tuning in. Bye.